in the boot, it's more like a saloon. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, Councillor. Do I detect the unusual yet unmistakable smell of carbolic about your person? And I do believe that's an almost clean shirt. All right, all right. Just because I've got a bit marks and sparks, there's no need to take the St. Michael. <laughs> if you must know, it's the first council meeting today, and as I've been elected by the good burghers of this city, I'm one of the burghers who's got to go to it. <laughs> Councillor Moffat Engineering. One moment, please. Not now, Betty, unless it's important. It's a Mr. Jackson demanding to speak to his council representative. Oh, well, not another one. All right. <laughs> Voice of the people speaking. <laughs> yes, Mr. Jackson, what can I do for you? Uh, no, funnily enough, I've got no idea why the dustbin men haven't emptied your bin. <laughs> oh, I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. They might come around filling it. <laughs> With Mrs. Jackson. Ah. Uh, why don't, you, uh, why don't you do what I do? Phone the depot, ask them if they'll look out for a lost wallet. <laughs> uh, God, hey, make, make sure you shut your garden gate, otherwise they'll trample it to matchwood. Uh, all right, all right. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do when I, when I get myself sorted out, all right? I guarantee you get satisfaction or double your rubbish whack. <laughs> Charming. What did he say? I'm not telling you. In any case, it's a physical impossibility. <laughs> oh, another, another one. Hello. Yes, Councillor Moffat speaking. Uh, yes, Mrs. Shawcross, we'd all like a reduction in our rates. Uh, look, I tell you what, if you happen to get one, let me know how you did it. I'll be very interested. <laughs> no, no, love, no. Look, the, the only chance you've got to get a reduction is to have the roof taken off your house. <laughs> yeah, well, the big snag there, of course, if it starts to rain, they'll probably charge you extra for water, so it's as broad as it is long. Uh, yes, look, I'm going in there this morning, love. I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, all right, ta -da. I better get round to this meeting before there's any more. Is me, is me head on straight? Yes, it's your mind that's crooked. Thank you. If you need me, I'll be sitting in the chamber. You're not going out yet, are you? I mean, there are things to sort out. Well, what do you think I'll pay you for? I don't even know why you forget to pay me. Betty, it's about time you stop relying on me and learn to stand on your own two left feet. And if there's a real problem, there's always Moffat's third law. And what's that? Ignore it long enough and something worse will come along to make you forget it. Well, how, how long will you be gone? How do I know? It's a small tea cake tearing party this morning, just a little get together so you can meet all your colleagues and feel for a chink in their armor while you're patting them on the back. But that means that you'll be gone for hours. Haven't you got enough work to do here without wasting your time playing politics? Betty, it is the duty of every freeborn Englishman to help maintain the ceaseless vigil for liberty so that government of the people, by the bureaucrat, on behalf of the inland revenue, shall not perish from this earth. <laughs> and, of course, if in the process you find out that the ship of state turns out to be a gravy boat, so much the better. Yeah, <laughs> Good morning, Gaffer. Here. Yeah. One box, extra large, union-sized tissues, all ready for heartbreak half hour. I don't care if you've got bagpipe drip. What the hell are you doing? I am talking about wage negotiations for the pay rise for the year before last. Not now, Harry. I'm in a hurry. And in any case, I've told you before, there'll be no more bread until I get a bit less loaf. Well, I mean, there's not very much what to do, is there? I haven't even got a job for myself. It gets a bit embarrassing for a shop steward, you know. You call a go slow and find that everybody's already at full stop. <laughs> All right, Harry, if you want something to do, there's an elastic band on my desk. And what am I supposed to do with that? What you do with every other job I give you. Stretch it out as long as you can, here. <laughs> hey, Beth. He's not gone off, has he? Only his rocker. All he seems to think about are politics and the council. You know, I think he's got a Napoleon complex. Oh, has he? Then maybe it's time somebody gave him the elbow. 
This is well for you, because I've got a terrible feeling I know where I might have stuck it. And for your information, I am not a mate, first, second, third, or play. I'm Councillor Moffat, representing the Brookside Ward. What? In a car like that? Give me a chance. I've only just gone on the council. It's taken me a couple of weeks to organise myself a roller. Well, I'm not an idea. I'm surprised you've heard of the internal combustion engine. I've got a proof of identification. The initials on my signet ring, which any minute now will leave an impression round your ear. All right. I'll let you in the book, Councillor Moffat. Well, you still can't leave your car there, mate. You'll have to take it on the back next to dustbins. If you don't stop calling me, mate, I shall personally keel all you round the town hall sewers. That parking spot there is for the leader of the opposition. Is it? Well, if all the workers round here are like you, you'll find out that that is going to be me, mate. <coughs> Ever such a funny wedding. No bridesmaids. And hardly anyone had a buttonhole. Hey. Sleeping Beauty, Councillor Prince Charming's just arrived. And her brother was standing next to this big man. He had policemen written all over him. Well, you couldn't help noticing how their hands turned over the pages of a hymn book together. Is it true women natter to fill in the time while they're trying to think of something to say? <laughs> he had to be prized off the whiskey bottle. He was so drunk, he tried to kiss me twice. He must have been. <laughs> I was talking to my friend. Were you? Well, now you're talking to your enemy. Do you mind waving your fingernails dry in the general direction of Dracula's den? Where? They wouldn't need a lot of soap to brainwash you, would they, darling? Where's the rates department? I'm only a temp here, you know. You certainly are. Don't worry, I'll follow the trail of blood. Suppose you've all heard about the bomb. The bomb? That's right, love the bomb. It's the river on! It's the river on! Oh, what on earth is going on here? This bomb. A bomb? What bomb? His bomb. Your bomb? Yes, my bomb. Well, what bomb is that? The bomb I'm going to put under you, lot, if I don't get some attention. <laughs> Just what do you think you're up to? Here. I don't suppose there's anybody named Robinson Crusoe works in this department? Of course not. Doesn't surprise me. I don't think there'll be anybody who'd have everything done by Friday. <laughs> if I have my way, I'll have you or the clowns down the road on your unicycles. You will either state your name and business, or I will have you thrown out of here. My name is Councillor Muffet. And as it so happens, I've only just been thrown in here. Oh, Councillor. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry, but I didn't know. <laughs> can I be of any assistance? Yes, as a matter of fact, you can. Some woman named Shawcross is pestering me about her rates, wants a reduction. Can you knock her a fiver off? Keep her quiet. I'm afraid you will have to get in touch with the valuation officer for that. Now, if there's nothing else? Yes, while I'm here, I might as well sort out my discount. Discount? Yes. Well, now that I'm a municipal mason myself, surely there's a little bit of give and take. I don't quite follow your meaning. Oh, what do you think I mean? I mean, surely there's perks in your game the same as any other bits. I mean, if I was a director of a stethoscope company, I'd have them coming out of my ear holes, wouldn't I? Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, you scratch my perk and I'll scratch yours. I'll support you in any big pay rises you want. If in return, you'll reclassify my works as an ancient monument. Mind you, you wouldn't be all that wrong in that. <laughs> that is a most improper suggestion. What are you talking about? Anybody who stays on the straight and narrow these days must be round the bend. I don't think I care to continue with this conversation. All right. Well, when I start running things, I'll have your luck jumping about like frogs with fleas. Good day to you, Councillor. Yes. And I... <laughs> the same to you with knobs off, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
job on independent. Uh, now, you must be uh, Councillor... Muffet. Ah, yes, the new boy. Well, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Manford. I'm what used to be known as the town clerk, but these days I'm called chief executive. Oh, how do you do? You're the right sort of fellow that's needed round here. Oh, kind of you to say, sir. Not at all. I've already met a few that need executing. <laughs> Who exactly are you referring to, Councillor? The town hall staff. I think they've all put in for the Duke of Edinburgh Award for sitting down doing them. Oh, come now. I said we ran a pretty tight ship here. Would you? Well, I'd have said that if there's such a thing as reincarnation, they're all working their life in hand. <laughs> well, that's not how I found things to be. No, I'm not surprised. It's usually the fellow in the crow's nest who's the last to know about the old in the old. I hope you aren't going to stir up trouble, Councillor. We have a very amicable relationship with our staff. Do you? And that's where you could be making your first mistake. You take my word for it. You either fire them with enthusiasm or you fire them with redundancy pay. <laughs> uh, well, let me get you a drink, Councillor Moffat. Very kind. A slurp of the old strychnine will get over very nicely. Uh, uh, Nigel. Now then, uh, sweet or dry? Sweet or dry what? Well, sweet or dry sherry, of course. Is that all you've got, sherry? Like pudding gravy. <laughs> Well, I dare say we could find you a drop of the old Glen Gurdle if you don't mind drinking it out of a sherry glass. We don't want everyone to know, do we? I don't want anybody to know, including me. <laughs> if it's all the same as you, I'll have a pint of poor man's painkiller. You mean beer? As it's lovingly called these days, yeah. <laughs> How to get round the trade's description act beats me. I I'll see what I can organise. Very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> If it's not Councillor Gregory, and not a surgical mask in sight. Oh, it's you, Moffat. Had the cheek to turn up, then. Well, I suppose you'd have preferred it if it was just me toes that had turned up. I did. You put on a lot of weight. They didn't say it was mostly between your ear holes. Now, look here, Moffat. <laughs> John, we've got trouble. Aye, let me introduce you to Councillor Fred Moffat. Hello, you must be Mr. Doris Moffat. You could put it like that, yeah. Maybe we're getting tired of your teeth. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Was there something you wanted to say to me, Mr. Mayor? George Fotheringham is resigned again. The police caught him last night. Well, old George, what, short of breath again? Man, I'm not surprised they're always taking it away in little plastic bags. <laughs> it took them two hours to sober him down enough to write out his resignation from the magistrate's bench. Oh, he's for it this time, but what are we going to do? Well, for a start, we'd better watch what was here. Moffat here's an independent, you know. Well, he can't be all that independent if he's married to Doris Moffat. But you support us, basically, don't you? Ah, uh, that would be telling, Mr. Mayor. Many a man's fallen flat on his face for saying exactly where he stood. Well, you see, I... Now, look, just be careful what you say, Eric. No, it's OK, Joe. I finish my term of office today, and my last job is to chair the meeting to pick my successor. Now, that should have been George Fotheringham. The trouble is, at the moment, the Conservatives are neck and neck with the combined opposition parties. But my chairman's casting vote would have made sure that it went to George. And his casting vote would have got us the chair on every committee. So now that George has had to resign, we need your vote, Councillor. Sounds like a plot from Dynasty. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind supporting you, of course, providing you've, uh, you've got a candidate of the right calibre. Oh, but we have. Councillor Gregory here is next in line. What, Joe? The right calibre for him would be a blast from a 12 or up the back of his ballot. <laughs> I'm warning you, Moffat. I was, I was thinking of someone of a completely higher social standing. Complete integrity. Shaggy beard. Big stomach. You know the sort of shaggy. You mean you? I'll second that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. He'd use the mayor's chin to lock his bike up. Well, it's, it's your choice, Mr. Mayor. It's either me or Mark's. You're on. Thank you very much. Very kind. Great. That's it. Here, Joe. Oh, Joe, no, we need no, those committee no, chairs. It's Joe. No. Here you are, Councillor. No. Yeah, very kind of you. What do you do? Hold it upside down so it wouldn't evaporate? <laughs> well, I, I had to fight my way through a picket line of striking staff. I don't know who's been upsetting them. Uh, you don't stand any nonsense from them. Order them back to their tea break and mean it. But, uh, uh, by the way, your secretary's here looking for you. Uh, over here, Mrs. Tucker. Now then, can I get you a glass of sherry? Not for me, thank you. It's inclined to give me an upset rates bill. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> the rates. <laughs> now then, Mrs. Tucker, what's a nice secretary like you doing in a non-working place like this, huh? I've come to warn you. When the bank manager heard that you were here, he went on the rampage. He said that if you can go off and leave your work like that, then it's time that they reviewed their overdraft facilities to protect their investment. Hello, Betty. Oh, Councillor Brownlow. You remember the Councillor Fred? The chairman of the Liberal Selection Committee. Oh, yes, I was a bit too liberal for your lot, wasn't I? Well, of course, we are a broad church, Moffat, but you were a little too far outside the lich gate. <laughs> yeah, well, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I wanted to have a quiet word with you. It might be to our mutual advantage to let uh, bygones be bygones. 
Really? Well, of course, you could be taking your bygones for foregones. Isn't it marvellous? All of a sudden, everybody wants to shake me by the boot. Five minutes ago, I was being turned down more times than bed sheets in a bordello. Don't you realise, Moffat? With your help, a Lib Lab Alliance could throw the Tories out. This is a home council. Is it? Well, they better make sure they've got plenty of rope for everybody, then. I mean, well, by the way, where does, where does the other half of this uh, mutual advantage bit come in? Well, we could arrange for you to be on one or two committees. Oh, you mean just one of a bunch of people going around trying to find an alternative to doing things the right way? All right, well, let's say Chairman and Finance Committee, eh? Correction, let's say Moffat for Mayor. You? Mayor? Very good. By George, I think he's got it. <laughs> but you, uh, you don't understand, Moffat. The Mayor has a certain social position to maintain. I see, and you don't think I know the right knife with which to flick me peas at the cupboard? Okay, you, uh, you wouldn't settle for Deputy Mayor, would you? I wouldn't settle for Deputy God. <laughs> well, I'll go and see what the Labour people say. Very good. Uh, oh, Nigel. Fill that with brewer's broth. <laughs> Councillor Moffat. It all depends. If it's costing me nothing, yes. Joe Haggerty of the Mercury. Now, Councillor, there's a rumour going round you to be the next mayor. That's surprising, isn't it? You've been so new on the council. Oh, no. I mean, these days, it's, it's not just what you know. It's not even who you know. It's what you know about who you know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we don't have very much background on you, Councillor. Exactly what do you stand for? The national anthem and inoculations in the butter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What I mean is, what do you consider the most important issue affecting the average citizen today? Oh, I see. You're getting a bit serious, are you? Well, right. in that case, law and order. Let's face it, it's not safe to go out of the house these days, mind you. It's not quite safe to stay in. <laughs> the only people seeming to be in regular work are burglars. So you're worried about the rising crime rate, then? Oh, not half I. Fall asleep in church, you get mugged by the choir. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think's the solution, Councillor? Strengthen the police force? No, strengthen the policemen. I mean, where are the lads with the mutton chop whiskers, the big bellies, the boots bigger than the ones that got on the police cars? I mean, these days, some of these coppers are so skinny, if they get a boil on the back of their neck, they overbalance. <laughs> Do you mind if I quote you on that? Not at all. Just spell the name right, will you? Well, let's face it, it's all this driving around in cars. I mean, you dial 999 from top of high rise block of flats, they'll, they'll blee blah their way round to your front door fast enough, but if they can't get the panda in the lift, they don't bother. <laughs> so, you want them back on the beat? No, I want them back on their bikes. So they can't chase after innocent speedy motorists. <laughs> and I should be telling the magistrate that when the case comes up next week. <laughs> right, well, thanks very much, Councillor. Not at all. Hey, you're not going, are you? What sort of a newspaper man are you? You're missing the best story. Well, how do you mean? Well, Mrs Gregory, Joe Gregory's wife. I mean, she doesn't know yet that uh, Joe's been pipped at the post for mayor after years and years of loyal public service. I mean, what sort of a story is that going to make the front page? Uh, the, the anguish of a wife standing by to comfort her husband in his hour of despair. I mean, you, you, you get that in the Sundays, that. You want to get round there before somebody else nicks the story. Take a photographer with you. Number 15, Jackson Crescent. Ah, that's an idea. Thanks, Councillor. Not at all, not at all. What are you up to? <laughs> You're not serious about being mayor. Why not? Once I give you the chain, you can have a ball. Well, the Labour <laughs> the Labour lot, the Labour lot won't vote for you. I mean, not after the way you've stirred up the council employees. Don't matter, does it? The Conservatives will. You mean you've been doing a deal with both sides? Well, I mean, I might be the only horse in the race, and I'll back myself each way, but you never know. Somebody might nick the winning post. Uh, uh, I, uh, I was... Actually, I want you to do me a favour. Follow that newspaper man round to Joe Gregory's house. Wait until he comes out, then go in. See Mrs. Gregory. She should have a, a letter for you to bring back here to me. A letter? Yes, there'll be an answer to a phone call I should be making in the near future. Well, come on. <laughs> it isn't anything illegal, is it? Of course it's not, and it's only just a little tiny bit immoral. On your broomstick. Now <coughs> <coughs> oh, then, Joseph. Getting ready for the Moffat coronation? You could have a shock, Cupboard Moffat. <laughs> Don't tell me you fuss your MOT to rejoin the human race. I've already shocked the Conservatives. Just to diss you, I've joined the SDP. One vote changing sides, it'll be enough to see you off. Ah, oh, see, that's why the mayor's dashing about like a gilded cat. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I see he's having a little chat with our liberal friend Brownlow. No doubt the plot sickens. Which reminds me, I've, uh, I've got to go and make a phone call. The, the next item on the agenda is the uh, election of mayor for the coming year. Now, as you're no doubt aware, the deputy mayor, Councillor Fotheringham, is uh, unable to follow me as mayor, as has been the custom. I am uh, therefore asking for other nominations for the post. 
So far, we've received two. Councillor Wagstaff, who's been nominated by the Labour group, and Councillor Brownlow, proposed jointly by the Liberals and Conservatives. Now then, before we proceed to take the vote, have we any more nominations from the floor? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I would like to propose Councillor Joe Gregory. I've discussed it with Councillor Brownlow. But joining up with the Conservatives like that, just so that he could get to be mayor. I know. The Council's not a job for an honest man like me, Betty. <laughs> Hang on. I've got a feeling we've wandered into a time clock warp or something. What do you mean? Where the hell are they all? What the hell are you doing? What do you have to do to make somebody appear? A rubber magic mashing can or something? <laughs> Just stay there, will you? Oh, it's typical, isn't it? You're away for five minutes, they all think it's summertime. <laughs> some are in the pub and some are in the betting shop. <laughs> So you're back then? Yes, we're back. And where the hell have you been? It's like the Mary Celeste in Wakes Week. Well, there wasn't very much work to do, was there? And you were not here. Betty told us how you wanted us to take more responsibility. So when people kept phoning up and saying, what is Councillor Moffat going to do about my drains and all my council house windows are broken, I just sent the lads out to do all those jobs. I thought it would be goodwill for you. <laughs> You mean to say I've been paying them wages to do work for the council? Are you mad, you great twisted tartan thingy? <laughs> goodwill. My old man used to say goodwill pays no bill. And as for having no work, I've got news. Have you got that uh, letter from Mrs. Gregory? <laughs> she said that it was for your eyes only. Did she? All right. <laughs> we'll have plenty of work, don't bother. This is a list of all the jobs that Joe Gregory's quoted for. And all the details of the prices he's quoted. We'll be able to undercut him on everyone. Mrs. Gregory gave you that? My price in standing down for the election for mayor and supporting Joe instead. <laughs> what a woman will do to become mayoress, eh? But she didn't become mayoress, did she, Frederick? It wasn't my fault Joseph went all STP. <laughs> all right, then, Harry. The party's over. Go and get all the lads back here, quick. And make a list of all those jobs you've done for the council. We'll bill them. <coughs> oh, and by the way, Harry... Just put the message about, will you? Tell them the gaffer's back, so watch it. He's a gaffer. Spends on paperwork and VAT. Keeps the money that the tax man doesn't see. He's a gaffer. 